I'm convinced that Frank Herbert's Dune, Dune is strongly influenced by real-life historical events. Let's take a look at the associations across ancient philosophy, religions, world languages, dictatorships, cults, and even artificial intelligence. Dune is much more than just a typical sci-fi story about the various planets in the universe. It's a deeply philosophical work that deals with concepts like war, imperialism and especially religion. The world of Dune is heavily influenced by belief systems, all of which tend to build a uniquely cynical atmosphere. The major beliefs in Dune are essentially a kind of corruption of the Abrahamic religions, specifically Christianity and Islam. But as Paul Atreides' legacy develops, he gives rise to a new belief system via the god Emperor Dune. From the heroes of the series to its most ferocious villains, the deeds of all these characters are in some way driven by their belief systems. So let's explore them. Philosophies and Religion Orange Catholic Bible Many of the main houses in Dune practice the religion of the Orange Catholic Bible, a fusion of beliefs of Christianity, Buddhism and Islam. Even the name Orange is a corruption of the actual name of the book, the Catholic Korangian Bible. Therefore, its Ten Commandments were a combination of these different religions, with many verses taken from the actual real-life Christian Bible. The reason for the creation of the Orange Catholic Bible? The necessity of creating a religious text after the war between humanity and the thinking machines. After the defeat of these machines, humanity was forever focused on preventing their return. One of the tenets of the Orange Catholic Bible was, you shall not mutilate the soul, while another commandment warned against creating machines modeled after the human mind. I'll talk more about these machines later. The Orange Catholic Bible was an attempt to unify long-held religions, even at the cost of a great filter of humanity. Speaking of the Orange Bible, we cannot miss out on the Ben Gesserit, the badass female community. Jesuits and Jesuit. It's no coincidence that they sound similar. The real Jesuits in Roman Catholicism and the Bene Gesserit characters in Dune have many parallels, including their commitment to service, mission programs, educational system, and political influence. It makes sense that the Ben Gesserit order has its basis in Catholicism, as Herbert was heavily influenced in his life by the Catholic faith of his Irish aunts. These aunts insisted that their nephew receive a Catholic upbringing. The author himself later referred to this period as an attempt to brainwash him. In short, this community of women does not hold any core beliefs, it aims to breed the perfect male follower. As we find out in the novel, they are not entirely successful in their ambitions. Ben Gesserit is mainly based on the tradition of Zen Buddhism, with a touch of Christianity. Just look at their litany against fear. I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. Fear is that little death that brings total obliteration. I will face my fear. I will permit it to pass over me and through me. And when it has gone past, I will turn the inner eye to see its path. Where the fear is gone, there will be nothing. Only I will remain. Language of Fremen Arabic on steroids Transitioning from religious influences, let's explore the linguistic aspects of the Dune universe. Since the main nation of Dune is the Fremen, we'll talk about the origins of their language. The Fremen language is primarily based on Arabic but has departed from this ancient language and has been enriched by other contemporary languages, usually in the direction of simplification. For example, one of the names for the sandworm Shai Hulut is derived from Arabic. The title of the Fremen housekeeper, the Shadut Mapesh, Mordeb, the educator, and many more. The Superhero Syndrome Moving on to the central characters, Paul Atreides, 
Kwisatz Haderach, Yusul, the Preacher, and the Mentat Emperor are prime examples of the superhero syndrome. The whole story of the first book is basically about how Paul has become the dictator and religious leader of the whole universe. Because of his ability to see into the future, he knew that his behavior was leading to a total massacre. The power of religions and ideologies is uncontrollable and easily leads to violence and destruction. Throughout history and even today, we meet heroes who have ravaged the world in the name of ideologies, whether political, religious or otherwise. These people may have thought they were doing good, but we know better. Future with AI? I know the title of the video promised to explore the historical aspects of Dune, but it wouldn't be me if I didn't make the connection between the rebellion of the machines and the current era of AI development. In Dune, humans don't rely on machines. They use genetically modified humans or mentats who possess great computing power. This genetic modification is caused by spices and other drugs. The author Frank Herbert has always been fascinated by drugs and believed that we can use drugs to enhance certain human characteristics. So, why don't they use machines in the Dune universe? According to their history, or our future supposedly, humans created stasis pods that were very similar to themselves. Machines and computers eventually rebel, starting a war called the Butlerian Jihad. Fortunately for humanity, the machines were defeated and it was forbidden to make and use machines and computers similar to humans. What surprised you most about the video? Let us know in the comments and watch our other videos, for example about this bad boy, King Baldwin IV. I know I left a lot out, so if you're interested in an expansion on the topic of the Dune history slash reality connection, give me a like, a follow, a bell and write I want to know more in the comments.